Uh, Patricia was just telling us about this weird, different environment that we're seeing ahead of the elections on Sunday. Uh, the Sunday vote is now widely seen as rigged. Give us your take. Well, this uh, presidential election has uh, no credibility. Uh, the uh, electoral, uh, electoral authorities that are supposed to be sup supervising this process uh, report to Maduro, to the uh, dictator of Venezuela, to the executive branch. And uh, there is no independent official um, domestically or internationally, because uh, the government has rejected uh, electoral international observers to, to, to watch this process. And uh, as, uh, as Patricia just said, uh, the main leaders of the opposition are bar are either under the under house arrest or in prison or like Capriles disqualify to compete in this process. We of course hear about severe shortages of food, medicines. What's the situation in terms of the humanitarian uh, crisis there in Venezuela, and how's that being uh, involved with uh, giving greater political control actually to the authorities? The humanitarian crisis that uh, Venezuelans are facing is uh, real and dramatic. Shortages of uh, food and medicine. Um, the in, in a context of hyperinflation, is uh, is extremely difficult, especially for those uh, uh, poor Venezuelans to survive in this uh, in this context. And the government, including Maduro himself, has implicitly and sometimes explicitly threaten the uh, population of Venezuela that uh, those ones who are getting some uh, food under price control, uh, which is essentially to survive in Venezuela, uh, they should participate in this uh, process. And uh, most of Venezuelans believe that the government has the capacity to uh, find out whether they participated and, secondly, whether they were uh, supporting uh, the government in this particular case, whether they voted for Maduro or not. So. Uh, um, the environment in Venezuela is, is, uh, is not only very tense, but, but most of the people, most of Venezuelan people feel under some degree of extortion by a government who is using access to food and uh, price control uh, to get support uh, for, the, for, the, for the dictator to ensure six more years uh, in, in power in Venezuela. So, Jose Miguel, take us forward to Monday. After the election, if, as is widely expected, Mr. Maduro does prevail, what will be different? Will there be changes? Will he effectuate changes, or will it be more of the same? Domestically, it's going to be more more of the same. Uh, he will um, probably celebrate another uh, six years and the full control of uh, of the country. Uh, but internationally, these elections have been already discredited uh, by the uh, most of the international community, most of democracies in Latin America, uh, the U.S. government, Canada, the European Union has requested to suspend this process for lack of credibility. I anticipated that uh, international. Venezuela and Venezuelan officials, those ones involved in human rights abuses as well as corruption, are going to suffer additional uh, sanctions from the European Union, from, from the U.S. and Canada, and from uh, main but, democracies in Latin America. But, but Mr. Pelanco, there have been sanctions already. They don't seem to have had much effect. Why would they have effect if they just increased the sanctions? Uh, the, the sanctions actually, I think, are hurting the government. Uh, key members of the administration of, uh, of Maduro are under sanctions in terms of uh, freezing uh, their assets, uh, most of these uh, illegitimate assets uh, outside Venezuela, and, uh, and canceling visas for them to travel freely to the region in Latin America and Europe, and obviously the U.S. Um, and this is an important issue for them because uh, every time that they meet with the opposition, the local opposition, their first demand is to ask them to persuade the international community to suspend these, uh, these sanctions. I do believe that uh, the best way for the international community is to increase those sanctions and increase the numbers of officials that should be 
and uh, and this uh, this sanctions for uh, cancelling visas uh, essentially and freezing their illegitimate assets mm. outside Venezuela. We've had Colombian, Brazilian government officials on our show, and they've talked about hundreds of thousands of uh, Venezuelan migrants just flooding their countries. What's the potential right now at this point that we could see an escalation into a major regional crisis? Uh, particularly in Colombia. Colombia is facing a very, very serious uh, uh, exodus, um, 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 uh, immigration of uh, uh, mostly poor Venezuelans who are escaping from uh, uh, insecurity and uh, lack of food and medicine. Uh, and this is creating a very serious uh, uh, burden for countries like Colombia and some states in Brazil uh, that are uh, at the border with, uh, with Venezuela. Uh, that's why, uh, you know, um, some of these governments have requested uh, cooperation from the international community to provide um, medicine in particular, but also food uh, for those refugees that are located in the, at the border um, uh, between Venezuela, uh, Brazil and Colombia in mm -hmm. particular.